Welcome to Life in Biology. I'm Dr. Joel Graff. Um, we've been talking about DNA replication and also transcription, and I think it's a good time where we could bring in the idea of uh, selfish genetic elements. Uh, these are DNA sequences that make up a very large part of human genome, and they uh, have some similarities to HIV virus, which is a retrovirus. And so to talk about these, uh, these selfish genetic elements that take up a big part of your genome, we're gonna first start off by talking about HIV and then take a look at what these genetic elements look like and you'll see the similarities. Okay, so a very stripped down uh, version of the HIV life cycle or just zooming in one, one segment of the HIV life cycle we start out uh, with a single strand RNA negative sense genome for HIV. And then that genome uh, has some sequences at the end that I've colored in blue. This pinkish purple color represents all the genes uh, in, in the HIV genome. But at the ends, you've got these LTR sequences, long terminal repeats, and repeats is going to be kind of the theme of the day. Uh, but you can use these repeats, they're important in the process of reverse transcription. And if you reverse transcribe this RNA, you'll end up with DNA. And then you can uh, integrate that genome into the human genome. So down here I have the human genome and you take this HIV genome and it'll insert itself into the human genome somewhere. Um, we have a lot of good HIV drugs right now, but the problem is those drugs mostly just work on viruses that are actively replicating. If the genome of the virus gets in integrated into the genome of the human cells, then those cells can go on and replicate or uh, hang out. And uh, the virus is basically a stowaway, like I've written for the title of this slide. And it could be at a much later time point where the genome of this virus starts to be transcribed and you end up with another infectious cycle of, of virus. Just like the long terminal repeats were important for the reverse transcriptase and other aspects of the virus gene rep or HIV replication, the long terminal repeats can also act as uh, transcription binding sites. So we have transcription factors can bind to the long terminal repeats and then they'll work on that genome and make the proteins and uh, then you can get M mRNA and you can make that, that protein or that virus again. So those long terminal repeats important for both replication and for transcription of HIV. Now, sometimes these uh, selfish genetic elements that are, these selfish genetic elements that are, uh, take up a big part of your genome are called jumping genes. So we're going to talk about trans1 TE. So TE is transposable element. So somewhere within your genome, this is a human genome again, you've got a transposable element. The transposable element has some repeated sequences at each end of it. That's what the R stands for here. And you can get transcription of that transposable element so that you have an RNA this, uh, there might be a, a, wow, there's a lot of screaming, that's my neighbor kids on their swing. Um, but anyway, the, this uh, RNA intermediate can be reverse transcribed and then it can be integrated into a, another place in the genome. So you end up with your original copy plus wherever another copy gets integrated into the genome. And so, that's why these are sometimes called uh, selfish genetic elements is because they copy themselves and so your genome has to be on guard against these and that might be the topic of another video, the defense system against these sorts of jumping genes. But then moving on, 
there, if there was a type 1 transposable element, then there's probably a type 2 transposable element, and these are called transposases. And here we've got a human genome in brown, flanking in blue right there is some inverted repeat sequences, and then somewhere in that pink part it encodes a transposase. And what happens is if that transposase gets expressed as a protein, it can bind onto these uh, inverted repeat sections and it, it can cut that uh, section of DNA out of the genome and then also integrate it into another position in the genome. And so that's called transposition, taking it from one place into another. And this is where the jumping genes really makes sense is because it jumps out of that place and then into a new place in your genome. Uh, these sorts of things were made famous by some studies by Barbara McClintock from the 1940s where she was studying uh, the genetic uh, mechanism for corn to change color. I don't know too much about that so I won't say anything more. But I do want, just as a final note on this quick video, is that copying is also possible. So in addition to cutting out this part of the genome and pasting it into a new part, you can do a copy and paste. Um, so wherever this was originally, if that DNA gets copied, it could then be put into another part of the genome while leaving the first copy in the genome. But we're not going to get into the ge genetic uh, gymnastics that have to go on to, to get that to happen, but a lot of times it involves bending the DNA, uh, the genome back over onto itself so that this uh, transposable element ends up being close to another place in the genome where it could then get uh, pasted into. So anyway, there's your jumping genes story for today. Uh, I think that's it for videos I'm going to make today. Uh, like and subscribe or not.